obviously he shouldn't be called a fighter I'm looking at you ollie this light he's not a fighter <laughs> uh, hot dog water Hello, my name is HypoTube. Today, we are discussing the brand new Dislight patch details coming out with two brand new characters. We're gonna get through the nitty gritty, discuss it all, get the fine details, and be able to take a quick look at any section you specifically want to get the information you need. Looking at the patch details, this will be coming out on June 21st, so mark your calendars, and that will slide in before reset. Now, probably the main reason you're all here is to see the new legendary Esper. We'll go ahead and take a look here. This is Ahmed, aka Geb, the ancient Egyptian god of the earth and the whole physical support of the physical world. Geb, along with her sister Nut, if you guys don't know, is TA, are pretty big deals among the Egyptian gods. But this is uh, from the game, they're gonna be called Ahmed. Ahmed is a support Esper who can frequently heal allies and enhance their attack. Yes, healer with attack bonus. Now, I like to do this in reverse. I like to jump to the third ability first, so we'll take a look. Ahmed's third ability, World Stage, reduces a Ability cooldowns for all allies and heals the allies with the lowest HP a certain number of times, each time restoring their HP equal to a portion of the caster's max HP. Cooldown will not be affected by unit abilities. We're seeing this go on characters like Unki Chai and things in efforts to kind of cut back on their constant cooldowns popping off. I'm assuming, based on that language there, that this is kind of a short cooldown already and they're scared of having it be even shorter. That being said, legendary Abilamon, so we'll see. Now looking at the passive or where the second ability would be, we got Ahmed's passive Warm Harmonics. Heals the ally with the lowest HP each time Geb... Geb? Heals the ally with the lowest HP each time Geb actively casts the healing ability. If a target suffers from a max HP penalty, I'm looking at you, Hyde and Luo Yan, restores the target's max HP threshold by a percentage and applies one stack of supporting song. If the target's HP is below a certain percentage, applies another stack of supporting song. Now, of course, supporting song in this instance being the undispellable, grants a percentage of base attack boost per stack as a max stack limit. I'm guessing it's like a 5, 10, 15, maybe even up to 30. We'll see. We don't know how it stacks. We don't know if it's 5, 5, 10, 5. I'm assuming it's going to be like 30 max. I don't think it's going to be like crazy levels like 50. But if it is, that's going to be insane. Again, we don't have the numbers, so it's hard to say. But then after Ascension here, this is... I don't know why they worded this this way. Um, but this is kind of the same thing as before. Albeit a little worded differently. Like they suddenly decided to do Gap casting a healing ability actively. They decided to put that... They decided they opened up with this, but it, you know, on here they put it second. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Dislike, I love it, the game, but uh, they had they have communication issues. I think this is kind of an example. Uh, <laughs> now the only actual difference between these two really is the uh, the wording's a little more clearer for the second run, but also it clears disease debuffs, so that is pretty substantial. I don't know if the stacking percentile will be higher. For this, Yo, if you get this character, you're probably going to max that anyway. So removing disease is kind of massive, especially for healers. Specifically, having a healing that cleanses is very powerful since like characters like in UA. This one being only diseased makes it a little more limiting, but at least, hey, you'll be able to do your job. Uh, unlike characters like Chang Pu, which might be locked behind some disease power. Now, now its first ability, Prelude to Life, attacks an enemy dealing damage based on the caster's attack max HP and healing an ally for a portion of the caster's max HP. I think Ebson all right around a oh, pretty decent character. I think he has a place where he counters something that's existingly annoying. And because of that, I think he has a purpose. Strong purpose. I will say that if there is any bossing or in-game mechanics or anything in the future that deals with max HP burning or, or any of the nodes that have Hades or the other guy, you'll absolutely be running Ahmed in those nodes. Now, focusing on Ahmed, I think you're definitely gonna be running the abiding 30% heal set or you're gonna be running probably ocean waves. Maybe the Windwalker set for some weird niche scenarios where you really need those ability cooldowns fast. That being said, I think the go-to will definitely be abiding or ocean waves for him. How strong it is to reduce ability cooldowns and apply attack all the time. Kind of leaning towards ocean waves, but what comes with that is that abiding is a lot more consistent and ocean waves is occasionally more useful. So it's a debate of how you wanna handle them, how you want them to go. But overall, I think that's kind of how you'll build them for the four set. For the two set, you're 100% gonna be running either Master Grove or Adamantium. And if you're looking at gear slot two, four, and six, 
I think you're going to be 100% free ring HP bonus on two and four and speed on six. Of course, we can't talk about Ahmed without talking about their look. Overall, I, I kind of like the design. He's almost got like a like a cape that doesn't exist kind of thing going on, uh, which I'm kind of a fan of. I kind of like. Love the hair, love the design, love the sleekness. Going off the cheeks a little bit from the back, but I don't know what in the hell he is holding. This dude looks like he's playing fucking mini baby minesweeper. That contraption is absolutely disgusting. And it's the worst thing about him. Overall, he looks awesome. It's your eyes. If you like it, you don't like it. There it is. Stuart, is, as they say, it is a fighter esper with high single target damage and the ability to inflict sleep debuffs on enemies. Now we'll jump to the third ability because I like to jump around. Time Vortex. Deals damage to an enemy at the cost of the caster's current HP. I have a self-inflicted damage thing, something to take note of. When landing a critical hit, deals additional damage to the target based on their max HP. Cannot exceed a percentage of the caster's attack. So it's a max HP shredding, aka boss killing move. And as well as that, it goes up based off the attack. So we're going to be building a lot of attack on him kind of obvious because he's a fighter but since they listed ollie as a fighter maybe not so obvious anymore this inflicts sleep on both the caster and the target now the caster and the target yes that means dionysus sleeps himself because he's getting fucking blasted but after ascension not exceeding center of the page blah 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 same thing as before but uses soundly dreams to counter attack if the caster is woken up from sleep now, what is Soundly Dreams, you're wondering? Soundly Dreams is Stuart's second ability. It deals damage to an enemy. If the target's HP falls below a certain percentage after the attack, it inflicts sleep on them. Yes, you're understanding the whole point of Dionysus. He gets drunk, shwasted, beats the shit out of you, puts you to sleep and knocks you out. He's so drunk and out of it that he immediately sleeps himself. So he's just passed out, kind of standing there. And if you hit him, he hits you right back and he might sleep you again if you're too low. And then Stuart's first ability is basic. Down your cups, deals damage to an enemy with a chance of inflicting sleep. That's right, he has CC on every single move. But I want to take note of something. Something that's very important here with wording that, that I didn't touch on too much. You'll notice it says deals damage to an enemy with a chance of inflicting sleep. There is no wording about a chance of inflicting sleep. This just says inflict sleep now that is the tar if the target's below if the target is below the threshold of course right so if they're below the threshold they are just sleep there's no chance there's no need to run accuracy on him per se albeit you will get a stronger basic because you you'll be getting that basic up right he'll just naturally cc now something to understand about his power before i kind of give a review overall so the idea when you're running a sleep characters is you want to be single target focused you want to be careful of aoe and adjacent hits something like sun wukong is a night you do not want to run sun wukong on a sleep based team but with this i'm pretty sure Celine and Stuart are some of the only sleep characters in the game and I, I don't think there's any more i'm not really sure at least off the top of my head now that being said my total idea of Stuart as a whole Stuart is great so he has two guaranteed ways so he has one 100 guaranteed way to sleep someone any one of his choice no accuracy check or anything as long as they're not invulnerable they can be sleep no check involved it just happens that is incredibly powerful that being said as well i'm gonna say that Stuart, i think will be a little niche in the sense that you don't want to run him with aoe units to get his full run but i think if you build a team around the idea of being single target blow-ups CCing together and trying to basically not wake up the baddies i think you'll do pretty well but we're definitely looking at war machine hades and hammer of thor and that's if his numbers are there. If his numbers are not there, obviously he shouldn't be called a fighter. I'm looking at you, Ollie. This light, he's not a fighter. <laughs> With Stuart, I'm, you're probably going to be running a two set, two set retaliation piece that hits back after. You're just going to be inflicting sleep nonstop on people and dealing a good amount of damage while you're at it. Not to mention the, the idea and synergy that if you proc his third ability when he's sleeping, he will both use his second ability on you and potentially proc the first ability to sleep you again. Depending on the order of these abilities may actually fuck you and uh, get them out of sleep because depending on that interaction, we'll have to see how it goes. But I still think even if that goes poorly for him, that interaction, I will still probably be running that two set on him. And when it comes to Dionysus stat lay down, I'm like I said, probably running Hades or the good old attack set. You're probably gonna run crit on his two, attack bonus on his four, and speed or attack bonus on his six. I can totally see you going the route of getting the incandescence route to get that 100 percent crit and focus on a crit damage for his two, for his gear piece two. I totally can see you doing that if the numbers are there. Next up is Stuart, AKA Dionysus. Yes, Di Stuart is kind of a drunkard, kind of a partier. Uh, and that's kind of the vibe that fits into their kit as well. It's a pretty fun design. His hair is absolutely bonkers. I don't know if that's a part of him or it's so poofy and big and I love it. I love his design. He looks, he looks a little drunk here. 
I don't know what the hell this little doodad is. He's dangling around here because it should just be a cup. This man's getting completely shwasted 24-7. Dude's a beefcake. He's looking fucking fresh. He has that look. He has that design. And I, I, I dig it. I really do. Now that is all for the new characters. If you guys have any questions about them, let me know down below. That's probably the bulk of why you came to the patch preview. But I will say 100% the rest of this patch is absolutely worthwhile to look at. Now for me, characters are king. So I'm going to skip down to the balance changes. If you were looking for the other updates and things a part of this event, please look again, look at the bottom section. It should be cut out to exactly where different sections are and you can nitpick exactly where you want to go and what you want to see. Boom, here we are in the Esper balance changes and you're already seeing some exciting stuff. Sun Wukong's up on the block and he's getting buffed. Very, very excited. Little, little spoiler alert, you also see a little bit of Hercules going on here. Yes, we're gonna get that in a moment. It's so exciting for both. So overall, I'm gonna skip the old stuff as it's not really important. The big difference between the new here, we're going to be dealing 30% more attack with the basic attack on two random targets. He's going to be dealing a lot more damage AOE and I'm all for it. And as well as that for his second ability, each enchantment absorbed increases the shield value by 5% of max HP and amplifies this attack by 10%. Wukong's actually is going to deal great damage with his number two as much as he should have. It feels terrible to get rid of those buffs, especially when you have Wukong on auto. Now he's gonna hit like a truck whenever he uses those enchantments and it's gonna hurt really bad because again, amplifies this attack by 10%. That's 10% across the board per enchantment. That is not 10% more attack. Take every, all the damage calculations, 10%. That is so much more powerful than 10% attack. So now, finally, I don't regret getting Sun Wukong instead of Li Ling. I think this catches Sun Wukong up. That being said, we're gonna check out Hercules. Now, these are a lot of changes, and spoiler alert, he's good now. Absolutely good. He has an absolute place. But the biggest problem is his third ability, so we're gonna skip to it. They decided to give us the attack up and crit rate up for two turns. Losing a turn on that obviously hurts a little bit, but attack up and crit rate up guaranteed before the move goes off. <sighs> Sign me up. I'm already down. This is a fighter with a self attack buff. That's so huge. As well as that being a shimmer, you're getting consistent damage all the time. First does the guaranteed dispel equal to 270% of attack, same damage, same true damage, but then reduces this ability's cooldown by one turn when an enemy has not been defeated. So you're going to be suffering that true damage, but you're also going to get this back a lot quicker absolutely awesome 100 percent. this resolves the hercules problem hercules is ready to go as a unit he's going to completely destroy in pvp he's going to be an absolute answer to any ollie matchup you see be confident that hercules is going to blow this kid out of the water that being said we'll touch on the new ability one the main thing being is that he actually gains a shield equal to 50 percent of this ability's damage for two turns awesome this is amazing because Hercules does not have much sustain. And with this addition here, Hercules is becoming an S tier unit in my head because you can put a retaliation set on him and now he is constantly giving himself shield and staying alive while still getting low HP. So he's gonna be dealing more damage with his ability. Hercules actually fulfills his job and levels up to the level to which he's caught up with all the other Shimmer fighters and I 100% think he has a place now. Taylor players, you absolutely should be happy. You should be celebrating as your Taylor is 100% online. And trust me, I've been waiting there right there with you because I've been dying to use this guy for so long. Next, we'll talk about Zhiyuzi, Zhiyuzi. I'm usually pretty good with his names, but when we start getting into the Chinese language, that's when you kind of lose me. I'm not as good at that, <laughs> but whatever. Death guard by. Of course, you're going to be running the twins together. You're going to be, this is admittedly the weaker side of the twins. Main difference here. This is going from a 40% to a 75% chance of reducing their AP by not 10, 20%. Now, of course, this is hitting three targets. So we're looking at a much higher percent chance potentially reduce 
the enemy team's AP by 60%. Same exact setup for the third ability here. The first hit though is gonna be buffed by 10%. So it's gonna be stealing 20% of the target's AP. And then the second hit also is gonna be increasing the target's debuff duration for one turn. So I'm thinking more and more, these twins are getting better and better. And I think uh, with this addition, they're kind of short up together. I can somewhat say that I think white's caught up. I can't say for sure if we're quite there, but I will say that they, uh, they should be worthwhile running and they should be good for you, especially in things like cube think a debuff based team i absolutely think they'll be there and take a look at zelmer here this is overall just kind of a cap on what they could potentially do uh deals 20 percent bonus damage per debuff up to 120 percent we're basically getting a cap on this i'm assuming there was some absurd scenarios where things were getting insane uh like unreasonable levels of damage i'm assuming for the npcs to us not actually for us to the npc but maybe there was some like crazy debuff stacking strategy with her for like killing bosses to be honest the implication of 250 percent of attack to, without the 120 percent sounds terrifying and um i'm glad they put it on it but i still think zelmer's absolutely garbage that being said if you love zelmer don't listen to me play zelmer but just know that their potential is a little hard from this all right on to my boy Unki chai here this one's a bit of a painful one slight wording change here but an additional line cooldown will not be affected by unit abilities they are already they are adding the legendary that reduces ability cooldowns so they're getting really scared of the potential of having all these non-stop ability cooldowns bouncing around having played some other mobile games and having some ability cooldown metas that become very prominent due to these kind of things i'm glad they have the foresight to shut it down but i'm sad to see my boy Unki chai being a part of the process sadly just not going to do as much with the legendary involved now this one was a bit of a surprise but uh frey is getting buffed and honestly pretty substantially i'd say now i will say that the biggest, mm, the biggest, huh, is probably the basic because getting a 70% chance of speed up for two turns, having that is pretty awesome. Removing that is kind of sad, but instead gaining the ability to just get an extra turn. Yes, an extra turn. If you guys have played around with Mona at all. You see the potential of this and there could be some crazy things going on with this. You might be running a retaliation set on Freya and she might constantly be taking turns and doing her abilities and chucking them out. What's that? Her abilities aren't that strong? Well, they're getting buffed. It purifies all debuffs from a teammate and reduces their cooldowns by one turn and grants them, of course, her unique buff. She's turning into an ability cooldown ramp with extra turns built into the kit. So you're probably gonna, it's weird. You're probably gonna run a retaliation set on her, maybe an ocean wave set on her, building as much of speed as you can into the kit. And then as well as that, that it cannot be debuffed. Now, my boys are a little debated on this. Uh, my boys are thinking that the person, while they have Brissingenman's watch, uh, they will not be able to be debuffed. It's a little bit unclear what this means, but I'm pretty sure this just means that this is undispellable, that you cannot remove this buff from them. Granting yourself a turn, constantly ending up the team and getting them more AP, much more of a slotted character in a really fast composition built upon speed and getting the fastest turn, but maybe even multiple turns on end. I think this absolutely buffs Freya, makes her a lot more reasonably useful. And uh, honestly, overall makes her pretty, pretty dang good. And I ironically think that Freya is actually pretty okay. But I, I think if you're a Freya lover, you actually can run her a lot more consistently and a lot more, a lot more often in just random content. She doesn't have anything about her ability cooldowns not being reduced by others. That means that on a team with the new legendary, I think she becomes even stronger than she already is to a point to where she's constantly taking turns, constantly reducing her own cooldowns and teammates cooldowns. The only thing you got to be careful of is obviously that overlap where she can't reduce, not reduce Ahmed's cooldowns. So she has to be very careful about that. Now we're going to finally get to the new features section and talking about that here. First off, the Divine Sequencer. Uh, enter from the right, upper right of the Echo panel. Disassemble an Esper to the device to get Mono Prism and Dio, Dio Prism used for redeeming Shimmer Records and other rewards. Can only disassemble a level one Esper with base stats. Cannot disassemble an Esper that has been enhanced, leveled up, ability, residence, upgraded. So if you've been residencing your characters, oof. But when an Esper has max resonance, you can dis disassemble them the next time you get the same Esper. So thank God we can actually get rid of this. So thank God I can actually get rid of my max resonance duplicates. And then cannot disassemble a base five-star Esper obtained through Esper Fusion. 
aka you can't be farming this non-stop with gabby or any fusion in the future are you turning duplicates into resonance to get more starry mon or are you turning your duplicates into the vine sequencer all in all you know it's a it's a choice that all of us will have to make all the time and you'll probably bounce between you know one to two weeks you'll be probably dumping them the divine sequencer getting a, a record and then the next two weeks you're like okay i got these characters i'm gonna start building them up and you're gonna be wanting to you know use duplicates on starimon so just kind of a nice little balancing act overall this just this just kind of adds free stuff to us to be able to use and i'm all for it i think it's dope i'm talking about charity show unlocks for squad level 20 plus players event time june 21st to july 5th it's going to be going on for about two weeks here uh side stories contain different esper stories open side stories replay events experience espers of experience each event requires inspiration points to unlock during the event login to get three inspiration points and spend 60 stamina in other instances to get one inspiration point grants gold records nexus crystals relic secondary attributes reset chances and other rewards event types essays story battles golden house mystery trader and surge of inspiration you must with your exes overall this is kind of like open-ended we don't really know what the fuck is happening here <laughs> it's kind of referencing things that we don't have information on maybe some sort of charity event as well i don't really know why they're calling it charity i don't know if this is going to go to some of the proceeds are going to charity or something or i don't know what's happening there all in all just an event to work through and i'm kind of happy for it um i hope it's not the same thing as the previous event it doesn't look like it will be it seems like it's a little different but it looks like we'll get some currency to spend on some stuff and that sounds fun to me now the probability up event aka probably the most controversial part of about this whole thing during the event the chance of summoning ahmed from echo spins is increased chance of legendary esper blah blah, blah is 10 percent you haven't obtained the esper after 500 450 summons the next legendary esper is summoned guaranteed to be that esper so basically uh the guaranteed ahmed pull is at 450 if i think i did that i saw the math right someone else did it goes from two thousand dollars to a thousand dollars uh all in all i mean it's more reasonable but i'm gonna be honest i'm poor as hell so i never really look at that i still think guaranteeing a character a thousand dollars is kind of absurd i think it's a bit too high um but coming from a guy who maybe spends about 20 to 30 bucks on the game a month uh that's at levels to which i have a hard time fathoming simple our apartment doesn't have furniture we literally ha we have boxes piled in the corner still i by no means am going to be spending a thousand bucks to get this character i wasn't going to spend two thousand even if it was $500, I don't think I would spend $500 on this unless I'm bringing in some more money. Obviously, I'd like to get to that point with my content. And I'd be able to pull that stuff and get that stuff and we can talk about it more. I think at its current level, it's a bit absurd with $1,000. I'd like to see it. I'd like to actually see it as towards the 500 range. And then I think whales will be a little bit happier. That being said, I think this is, I mean, it's better, right? We've improved. I still think there's some giving room in general there. But if I had to choose between 450 summons for the, the event, arguing that or arguing for the 120 guaranteed legendary to go down to 100 or even 80, uh, I'd much rather argue that. And is the main arguing point that people should be talking about more and more. And they get the guaranteed legendary and it's a duplicate of a legendary, legendary they already have. It's eating them alive. I know at least two people in particular who are also free to play players who literally quit the game because of this issue. We need the lower legendary. We need these lower legendary things going. And if you're starting to argue for this stuff, please join the fight and try to get us to try to get them to try to get Lilith games to listen to us to 80 or Hey, meet me halfway a hundred that rant aside. Bounty uh, mission review feature app Atlas story review. You can, you know, look back at stories you did. You'll get the stories unlocked. You can rewatch them. Complete a side story in the bounties to replay later in Atlas. Cool. We get to watch stories if you care. Quick jump feature and Esper deployment screen. When deploying Espers, hold a Esper and tap Enhance to jump to the growth section of this Esper. Tap Enhance in the recommended formations. Screen to quick jump to the growth section of the first low level Esper. So the idea is that we'll be able to jump to those screens and then maybe jump back. I don't know if this implies we can jump back. I'm assuming we can, and that is nice. That's quality of life. Uh, added a report feature in the Esper comments screen. Channel 8. This is for Channel 8, and I don't mean the actual channel. I mean people that get out of Channel 8 and sniff in other channels. Sniffers, be responsible. Sniff in your chat, not others, all right? If you want to sniff in Channel 8, sniff in there all day. I don't mind. Added side story bounty missions and diaries for Selene and Ahmed. So cool. You're going to have some side story bounty missions. Uh, added Esper theme name cards for levels, ascensions, and residence, Mac, Ahmed, and Stuart. So that's going to be cool. Having some new name cards. I would love to get the Stuart one. You already know. And then added new tactic exam for TA, aka Nut, Fritzker, Mim Mimir, 
and Bonnie, aka the bane of my existence when it comes to rolling shimmer purples. Now to adjustments and optimizations here. They're gonna be adding an, a club name card sharing feature. They can basically tap a club cut name card to request to join in. Kind of optimizing the club kind of advertising section is it's a little mediocre and weak right now but as well as that added a filter feature in the club member screen that sorts out players based on seven day activeness very useful <laughs> at least it's been frustrating for me to try and get people in and involved in the club then as well as that for hollow weekly reports they'll be coming out for the club screen you'll be able to see that so my club members will be able to easily flame me for how poorly i did in the week now this one's huge Players can switch their defensive formation during the hollow battle offensive phase, but it will only take effects in the next battle. God, I really wish we had that the first week, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, kind of an annoying feature. I was really hoping to get that a lot earlier, but hey, and they, they added the quality of life. I'm happy. Add a defensive leaderboard in the defensive formation section. You defense, you defense lovers rejoice. You actually have a place to brag, a place to show off. Uh, every week after tallying, the leader will be updated based on club ranks and players' defensive win rates. Requirements, though, a player's club is ranked in the Hollow Battles top 10%, and the players have attended has attended at least 10 defensive battles. And then the top 10% clubs in each week's Hollow Battle will have a special icon in Club Info. Player name card and player avatar screen. The special icon expires when a club no longer ranks in the top 10%. AKA the elitist mentality is growing immensely. We are gonna have people flexing on each other all the time now. Uh, and then as well as that, when there is an insufficient number of players for hollow battle club masters slash decorative club masters can send announcements in bulletin during the preparation phase and defensive phase. So that's a nice little touch for club masters there. Some more optimization and quality of life love here. The Asper level up optimizations. Basically, Experimon of the same quality will now stack up. Instead of having a giant pile of little dudes to level up and work through, they're compiled and a lot neater to look at. And God, dude, I'm so happy that's happening because at the end of my Esper tab, it's a mess. Well, as that, we're looking at some story changes. Tweak the difficulty in Story Chapter 7 with 12 Easy Mode to provide a smoother experience for players. The practice stages in Story now unlock after clearing Stage 3 instead of Stage 5. So that's nice. Uh... Unfortunately, I'm still stuck on 4-7 because I'm getting apps fucking destroyed by those dudes that literally suicide bomb. Infinite miracle changes, increased spatial tower rewards. Players will be compensated based on the increase in rewards. Cool. And then increased tower rewards. Players can get more record fragments after July 1st, 2022. If you've completed spatial tower, you're just going to get a bunch of free rewards. Congrats. Uh, Esper info and growth screen optimizations here. You can actually see the stat differences and actually look from those scenes instead of dipping over instead of dipping over to that list saves you a little bit of time very nice old tidbit here players are now in a ripple dimension by tapping the banner in the world chat god that would have gotten me at least two sahuas back in the day and i'm sad about it uh optimize the refreshment mechanism on the Q shop after june 30th items for sale in the shop will refresh every 14 days i believe if that time works out we're gonna have like a day or two of cube shop being refreshed and it's going to refresh the next day so try to save some currency for this if i did my little math right uh we should have some absurd levels of cube shop rewards uh for a quick little time frame slightly reduce the chance of getting five star relics from the online union shop in the early stages okay shits on early players a little bit i mean oof but uh i did see some very early reds very on i will say i think i got one that was that was kind of useful optimize the berenice pastet portrait for her debut appearance in story mode whoopty uh optimize the relic displays the number of base secondary as attributes is now displayed in the upper left of the relic icon cool cool quick way to quick glance at relics now and optimize some emoticons of the chat system whoopty do that being said, that is all the patch information I have to share with you today. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please let me know. I can continue doing it. We can get some more content going. If you have any ideas, optimizations of this whole kind of flow of content, let me know. Uh, I'm still kind of working it out. I, I'm a lot more funnier and goofier usually. Uh, we're a little more analytical for these kind of videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Like, comment, subscribe, check out my content. I play a lot of League of Legends, but I also play Dislight. I'm down to chit chat about Dislight anytime, even while I'm streaming. Check me out in the Discord. We hang out in Discord all the time. If you want to chit chat, talk about Dislight or life, or just get to, get to know some people, make some friends, have some memes. TikTok, Twitter, even check my VODs channel if you want to see full VOD. But most importantly, check me out on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash hypotube. Currently, I stream Saturday to Wednesday, 8 p.m. PST. If you can't do time for versions, just go to my Twitch, hit the follow button, check the time schedule below. It's all displayed there for you real quick and easy. I even have a converter for your local time zone. It shows up for you based on your browser. And again, my name's Chad, aka hypotube, your friendly neighborhood neckbeard, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. 
Falling into love hurts just as much as falling out of it. But I'll scrape my knees and scar my sins. I hope you never doubted that I'm down for you. Wanna hit the town, make it loud, be a clown for you. Or maybe we could be a Romeo and Juliet. Except without the age difference and we can forget the death. Cause this is love at first sight. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. And darling, forget about the time cause you're mine. And I'll spend every second chilling with you. Like, like just that vintage Nickelodeon innocence love. Innocence the type of if we fight, let's chill and make up. You're one of a million pay stubs but to me you're like a lottery there's a lot of fish in the sea but you're a catch that's so startling baby i know that there's a lot to do it's awful too and then your past there's a lot to chew i'll buckle up